A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Hello everybody, I've, uh, I've made some progress this week. As you can see, I've got frames all the way across my wall now, with the exception of one that's missing. I've just got a, a picture up there with no frame. That's because it's this frame, which arrived like this in the post. There is another one coming, a replacement, but hopefully that doesn't take another four weeks. Fingers crossed. You'll, uh, you'll be pleased to know though, you'll be pleased to know that uh, this video is not all about frames, it's about colour theory, which is a massive topic that I couldn't hope to cover in one single YouTube video, but today I'm going to focus in on colour harmonies for photography and art generally, basically. Which to be honest in itself is a massive topic, but I'm going to stick to the basics. And then I'll talk about why it's important, or at least advantageous, to know about this stuff when it comes to your photos. Uh, right, we'll kick off. This probably looks a bit weird from here, but it's my computer mouse, it's just not quite in frame. Uh, yeah, so we'll kick off with a photo that I took in the Faroe Islands. As you can see, this photo is largely green. So let's get rid of these. I should probably explain, I, uh, I've printed this off. I was gonna say I've made it, but that would have oversold it, to be honest. I, I just found it on the internet and printed it. And I've also got these little white discs that I just cut around a five pence piece to put on the colour wheel. All the best things in life are simple, I think. Uh, yes, anyway, as you can see here in the Faroe Islands, there is a green, which is the key colour, and then the complementary colour will be directly opposite this green on the colour wheel. And this isn't just applicable for green and red or orange, an orangey red. So this works all the way around the wheel. So every time I move one of these discs, if I move the other disc to the opposite side, you will get a complementary colour. So if we look at some other images, as you can see here, there's blue and orange. So blue, orange. Uh, another example, blue and orange. Another example, blue and orange. I like blue and orange, or orange and teal, as has become very popular on Instagram. So yeah, that's the first and most popular colour harmony. Complementary colours. Very simple, that one. Uh, next up, if we look at this photo that I took in Greenland, this is a colour harmony that is called Analogous. So it's blues and it's teals and turquoises and a couple of little purples, but basically, even though there are slight different shades of colours and slightly different colours, all of the colours that appear in the photo appear from the same segment of the colour circle. Yeah, I keep calling it a colour circle, it's a colour wheel. I don't know why. Colour circle. It is technically a circle. Uh, now obviously this doesn't have to happen with blues, it can also happen with other colours. So here is a photo that I took a few months ago in the autumn, and in here you've got sort of burnt oranges and reds, you've got yellows, uh, a couple more oranges, that sort of thing. But basically all the colours are bunched together on the colour wheel. I was going to say circle again then. But they are, importantly, from different colours, they're not all exactly the same colour. If they were all the same colour, but just different shades of that colour, then that would be a colour harmony called monochromatic, which we've come to associate with black and white, but actually monochromatic just means one colour. So here is an example of that, a photo that I took in Winnet's Pass um, last summer. So there's greens, basically. Different shades, but they're all green. So on the colour wheel, it looks like that. Now next up is a colour harmony known as triadic, and to be honest there's no prizes for guessing what that means. Correct, triangle. So if we look at this photo that I took of Emily in Sri Lanka for example, there are sort of peachy, orangey, peachy things, I don't know, it's probably somewhere about there for Emily's skirt and the rocks. And there's obviously blue in her shirt and in the sky, so something like that. And then there's yellowy greens for the trees, something like that. And together, they all form a triangle. Now there is a harmony that's kind of between complementary and triadic, and it's called split complementary. Uh, so here is another photo that I took in Greenland. And if we take the key color, which I would suggest is blue, but it's kind of like a, a tealy blue. So something like this, let's say, over here. And if we were to place one of these little markers uh, in a complementary fashion, so directly across on the colour wheel, somewhere like that, you'd end up with like a, a really dark burnt orange. But actually I'd say in this instance, in this photo, the sky is kind of more like that. Something more in line with that. And then you've got the boat, which is just plain red. So you end up with this sort of Y shape instead of a straight complementary colour, which is just directly across. So you're kind of like complementary and also kind of like triadic. 
Um, another example of this, so this is a photo I took in Italy, and as you can see, there's kind of like the orange of the boats, and then you've got kind of a yellowy green as the trees, and then you've also got a nice light blue for the sky and the reflection in the water, and again, you get this sort of Y shape. And then finally, last one I promise, is square. And again, no prizes for guessing what shape that takes. Uh, so if we look at this photo that I took in Norway, for example, there's quite a dark blue, and then there's like a, a nice muted green, and there's quite a muted kind of dark yellow as well, the flowers, and then there's the red of the hut. And that all makes a square. I mean, there is also like a, a turquoise as well, but I don't have a fifth disc and it would sort of ruin the square, really. Yeah, I mean, all your best photos don't have to fit into these most popular colour harmonies, but knowing about them can certainly help. And I mean, I would definitely understand if you sat there thinking, well, why are you telling me about that? Why do I need to know about colour harmonies? I mean, I, I go out my front door with my camera, and the colours are just what they are in the world. I can't exactly change them. I get that, but there are two reasons I think it's important to know about this stuff. Number one is that when we go out and take photos, typically we're looking for nice shapes, we're looking for things that we think might be able to tell nice stories, we're looking for contrast, we're looking for texture, we're looking for light, and I think if we're looking out for colour, it will also help us to find more compositions. And if you're aware of these harmonies and you can see them in nature, then that a lot of the time can give you ideas or opportunities for taking more photos. The second reason that you might want to know about this stuff is that it can really help you in your editing and it can help bring out the colour and therefore the impact of your photos. Uh, so for example, the very first image that I showed you, the Faroe Islands, if the grass in that image wasn't so green, if it was more of a, like a brown, that's sort of more over here on the colour wheel, then the complementary colour of that, just get rid of these ones, would be a really dark blue and therefore I could adjust the colour of my jacket in Photoshop or Lightroom actually, using the brush tool in Lightroom, but uh, I've always used Photoshop to do that, so old habits die hard. So yeah, knowing about the colour wheel and the colour harmonies that work within the colour wheel can help you bring out uh, details in your photos and can help them look more complementary or triadic. And I mean, I'm not suggesting that you need to leave your house with one of these and you need to walk up to bits of grass and say, I wonder what shade of green that is, and therefore what colour coat I need to be wearing in the photo. You don't need to do that, but it helps to have a general knowledge of what colours work together and why they work together. And I think that can improve both, as I say, your infield compositions, but also your editing style as well. Anyway, yeah, hopefully that was useful. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments. I'll try and answer them. I'm not by any means an expert when it comes to colour theory, but uh, knowing just a bit of the basics, as I've hopefully explained in an okay fashion today, really um, does have its benefits. So thank you for watching, and also a big thank you to this week's video sponsor, Squarespace. So if you're looking for a place to show your perfectly colour harmonised photos online, then look no further than Squarespace. So with Squarespace, there's loads of templates to choose from, there's a ton of customization available, and you don't need to know a single line of code to be able to make an amazing looking website. Which is why I love it, because I don't know a single line of code. So you can get a free trial of Squarespace by going to squarespace.com, and after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, then go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off that first purchase. And I really recommend checking them out and a big thank you to Squarespace for their continued support of this channel. Much appreciated and I really appreciate you watching as well and hopefully next week I'll have uh, all my frames available. Does that look weird? I don't... Maybe it doesn't. Anyway, thank you for watching.